Welcome to Bringing the Word to You. This is your host, Minister Tim Greco, coming out of Omaha, Nebraska. We know how hard and difficult it is to get to church and Bible study, so that's where this ministry brings the word to you. You know, God is a good God. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. All thanks to my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the opportunity to teach his word. Thanking him for taking me where I once was to where he has brought me to today. We want to thank everybody for tuning in today as this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We hope that you are strengthened and encouraged by the end of this program and we pray that if you don't know Jesus now that you do know him before the program is over. We pray that if you have taken your eyes off of Jesus that you put them back on him and repent as the Bible says Come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We pray that if you are hopeless, that you are given a hope in Jesus Christ that will not fail you. God is always good, and he's doing so many great things through this ministry. Thanks to all of you who prayerfully consider giving to the ministry and all your generous contributions, we are able to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world, reaching so many. All we need is an invite from you, and we would love to fellowship, worship, and bring the word to you. So please visit our website at www.timothygrecoministries.org to learn more and book us today so we can continue to build God's kingdom together. Let's pray. Lord, we just want to thank you for today, Lord. Uh, we thank you for always being there with us, Lord. We thank you for always walking by our side. Lord, we thank you. Um, Teach us valuable lessons as we go through trials and tribulations in life, Lord God. And Lord, we command the enemy to flee in the name of Jesus, Lord. We submit ourselves to you and we resist the devil uh, and he must flee from us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to thank you um, for waking us up this morning, Lord. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, please empty me and myself, fill me with your Holy Spirit, and speak to your people the way that you want to speak to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's a good day to be in the studio today. It's a good day to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for each and every one of you who are tuning in. Thank you for uh, listening to Bringing the Word to You. And my prayer for you today is that you be uplifted strengthened, encouraged. For those of you who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I pray that you come to salvation before the end of this program. For those of you who have backslid and need to repent, which repentance is for all of us, I pray that we all repent and are forgiven of our sins. The Bible says God is quick to forgive us of all unrighteousness um, as we repent. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I've had a rough couple days. I've had a rough couple weeks. And one of my favorite things as a teacher, a preacher, evangelist of the gospel of Jesus Christ is just to be open and honest and transparent with everybody. Um, you know, I have feelings too, and I go through some things too. And it's not about the trials and tribulations that we go through that we should focus on. It's, it's the lesson to be learned through the trials and tribulations that we go through. And so I was just sharing with my friend before this radio program started about some of the things that have been frustrating me these last couple of days. And, you know, I made a comment of, you know, if that's if that's what's frustrating me, then life is pretty good. You know, sometimes we get so far in our walk with the Lord where God is so good taking care of our problems, taking care of our worries, taking care of our cares that when little things happen, we get so mad and angry and upset. I don't want you guys to look at the weapons the, the enemy is forming against you, but I want you to take a look around at the blessings that God has given you. I mean, your heart is beating today. We're breathing in oxygen. The sun is shining. Not to look at materialistic things, but just be thankful and blessed that you're alive today. Be thankful and blessed uh, for those who love you and for those that you're able to love. And so... I take a look back now at some of the things that I was venting about, and I was like, man, life is pretty good if that's all that I have to vent about. So as I've been frustrated and stressed out these last couple of days because of the attacks from the enemy, I'm definitely going to spend some time with the Lord and ask him what lessons he wants me to take out of it. But I'm truly grateful um, and truly blessed 
to have uh, everything that the Lord has given me, um, especially life, salvation, the Holy Spirit, and the opportunity to preach his word. And so I am very thankful for that. I wanted to go ahead and jump into John chapter 5 today. John chapter 5 is a very powerful chapter. I believe this is the first radio program I'm doing with no notes in front of me and simply just opening up to John chapter 5 and going verse by verse and kind of digging into it together. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. John chapter 5, starting in verse 1, the word of God says, after this, there was a feast of Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem was the sheep gate, a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew, and he had already been there in that condition a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day, the Sabbath, the Jews, therefore, said to him, who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well, sin no more, lest something may come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Let's go back to the beginning of the chapter. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem in verse 2, now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. See, the number five in the Bible uh, has meaning to it, and every number in the Bible has meaning to it, for there is no word in the Bible that was put in there by accident, but we have five senses. We have the sense of smell, the sense of sight, uh, the sense of taste, the sense of touch, and the sense to hear. And so today, I pray that as you ask for wisdom, God gives it to you. I pray that the scales fall off of your eyes, that you're able to see God's glorious light, and that you're able to see the things that God is doing for you and appreciate all the blessings that are around you. I pray that you're able to hear from the Lord. And I pray for a seal of protection over your sight and over your hearing, that you see and hear only the goodness of God. I pray that you're able to touch the goodness of God, see the goodness of God, smell the goodness of God, taste the goodness of God, touch the goodness of God, hear the goodness of God. In verse 3, the Bible says, In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. See, there's many people out there today who are blind to the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many people today who are paralyzed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many people today who are unable to see the goodness of God. They are unable to see the blessings that are all around them. They are unable to see all the goodness that God is doing for them in their lives. There are some people who are paralyzed in their sin. They can't get away from the drug and alcohol addiction. They can't get away from the sexual immorality. The Bible says greater is he who's in us than he who is in the world. We can't try to get right to get with God, but we need to get with God to get right. And today, the Lord wants to come up alongside you and help you through whatever it is you're going through. He no longer wants you to be blind, lame, or paralyzed. 
See, in this lay a great multitude of sick people, the blind leading the blind. We see in the book of Matthew chapter 15 where Jesus was talking about the blind leading the blind. There's a lot of people out there today who are leading other people in the wrong direction. You can't follow people, but you need to follow the leading of Jesus Christ. If we want to idolize people and things of this world, we're going to have to pay the price for it. There's a lot of blind people out there today who have a lot of influence that people are following. And because people are following those idols and those people of influence, they themselves are cursed with the negativity that comes from those idols. And they're pouring into their life the negativity from that person. Here in John chapter 5, these people were waiting for the moving of the water. There's people today who are waiting for the movement of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people today who are waiting for the moving of Jesus' love, waiting for the moving of Jesus' grace, waiting for the moving of Jesus' mercy. The Bible says that we need to draw near to him as he draw near to us. So there's no longer a need to wait for the moving of Jesus, but to get up and draw near to the Lord. Get up and repent because God will forgive you of all unrighteousness. Get up and open the word of God and read the living word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The Bible is God in written form. We need to get up and stop waiting. We need to get up and read the word of God. We need to get up and worship the Lord. We need to worship him and the things that we say and the things that we do. They were waiting for the moving of the water. Today, Jesus is moving. Today, Jesus wants to move in your life. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he wants to shed the same love, mercy, grace, and forgiveness in your life today that he shed in your life yesterday, last week, last month, and all throughout your life. In John 5, 4, the word of God says, For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in it first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. See, this is a myth in John chapter 5 where these people thought that it was the water that was healing them. These people thought that it was the pool that was healing them. An illustration that I can give you is, let's say that there was some healing going on in a restaurant here in town. If somebody was to get healed in the restaurant here in town that you witnessed the healing going on in, there'd be a huge rumor that if you went into that particular restaurant, that you would be healed because of the restaurant. It's the same myth that's here in John chapter five, where all these people thought if you can just touch the water, you would be healed. It's not the water that heals us. It's not the restaurant that heals us. It's not people that heals us. It's the living word of God. It's Jesus Christ himself was made well of whatever disease he had. John 5, 5. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Many of you have been struggling with something for many, many years. Many of you have, have been battling the same things day after day, week after week, year after year. You know, I have a lot of flaws and I have a lot of struggles and temptations in my everyday life. Especially being a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the enemy sure likes to mess with me. He likes to mess with anybody that's getting ready to share the gospel. He wants to try everything he can to keep the gospel of Jesus Christ coming out of somebody's mouth. Then when the gospel comes out, he wants to mess with you even more because he's upset because even he knows the power of the word of God. These people were there and this man was laying there with an infirmity for 38 years. Many of you have the same infirmity because you're looking to the water and you're looking to the restaurant and you're looking to the location and you're looking to a person to touch you and heal you when only Jesus can. What is taking you so long to get on your knees and cry out to the Lord and ask him to take away whatever it is that's bothering you? Now we take a look at the life of Paul and we see that Paul had a thorn in his flesh. We see that Paul prayed three times that this thorn be taken out of his flesh and it wasn't. There's something in my life that I consider to be a thorn in my flesh and I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed. The Lord has healed me partially um, of that. And what I mean by that is he has healed me partially by letting me know that he is God almighty, by letting me know that he has heard the, the, 
the, uh, my prayers and he has answered them. However, there's a little bit still there to remind me to remain humble. There's a little bit still there to help me to be sympathetic and empathetic to those who are going through things as well. It's very humbling to have what it is I have the way that I was born. And I thank God every day for my flaws and, and some of the infirmities because it is those that cling me closer to the Lord. It is those that keep me out of the ways of the world because God's love is longer and higher and wider and deeper than anything we can experience. And because of the grace of God and because of his love and because of who he is, I am able to stay out of the world and away from the things of the world and remain humble and on fire to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here in this ministry, we lead people to Jesus, preach repentance, and give people a hope in Jesus that will not fail them. At www.timothygrecoministries.org, you can see what this ministry is all about, and we'd like to come together and have you partner with us so we can help build the kingdom of God. In John chapter 5, verse 6, the word of God says, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time. See, Jesus saw him. Today, Jesus sees you. He sees what it is you're going through. He sees what it is you're dealing with. He sees where it is you're going. He sees what it is you're listening to. He sees what it is you are praying to him. The Lord sees you. He hears you and he understands you. There's many people today, and I was guilty of this for so long, where so many times I wondered, where is God? Where is God? Where is God? Where is God? Lord, do you hear me? And I believe that many of you are going through that right now. It takes full surrenderance, opening up the word of God, abstaining from sin. I know that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, but Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. If you're messing around with this and messing around with that, and wondering why you're not being healed and wonder why you don't feel the presence of God, we need to first sacrifice those things at the feet of Jesus and God will draw near to us. Here in John 5, 6, when Jesus saw him lying there, just like Jesus sees you right now and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time. Jesus knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows what you're struggling with. He knows where you're going and what you're doing and who you're hanging around. He knows the things that you still need to sacrifice to him that you have yet to do. He said to him, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made well? Now, why would Jesus, the son of the living God, fully man and fully God, fully man where he had to pray, but fully God where he didn't have to repent. Why would the son of the living God ask this man if he wanted to be made well? I believe that Jesus was testing his faith. I believe that Jesus singled this man out out of the whole crowd. Just like today, Jesus is singling you out. You are special. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are magnificent in the eyes of God. And out of this whole entire world, the Lord wants you to know today that he is singling you out, wanting to touch you and heal you and anoint you. And show you his plans for your life and give you a purpose. Take away that hopelessness and take away anything that you might be struggling with. John chapter 5 verse 7. The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool. So first we see that this man thought that it was the pool that healed him. When in actuality, it's Jesus that healed him. Here he has the son of the living God standing right in front of him asking, do you want to be made well? And this man is wrong on who it is can heal him thinking it's the pool as opposed to Jesus himself. Today, many of you are wrong in thinking who it is can heal you or what it is can heal you. That alcohol cannot heal you. That sexual immorality cannot heal you. The fornication, the adultery, the alcoholism, the things of this world, that brand new car, that brand new house cannot heal you. That person that you're with, you're not going to make better when you get married. That person that you're with, you're not going to change them by marrying them. You have the son of the living God standing before you right now asking through me, do you want to be made well? It's a testing of your faith. And today God is singling you out, wanting the best for you. 
plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. This man said, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool. So now this man is becoming so prideful, not understanding that Jesus wants to heal him, but also making excuses and blaming other people saying, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool. Today, many of you are making excuses as to why you can't be healed. Today, many of you are making excuses as to why you're not healed. It's not Jesus' fault. And I'm not saying it's your fault, but we need to stop being prideful, stop making excuses, and understand that it's Jesus Christ himself that can touch you, heal you, anoint you, and fill you with his Holy Spirit. In John 5, 7, the, the man goes on to say, sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, which is a myth. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. There he goes, blaming other people again. There he goes being too focused on other people and being too focused on worldly things to not be able to receive his healing. What are you focusing on today that may be the reason why you're not being healed? What is it you're focusing on today that might be why Jesus isn't able to come into your life and do what it is he wants you to do? Who or what is taking the place of the Lord? John chapter 5 verse 8, Jesus said to him, rise take up your bed and walk and immediately the man was made well took up his bed and walked jesus didn't feel sorry for this man you didn't hear jesus saying oh you know poor baby i'm sorry for you no today jesus isn't feeling sorry for you because he's standing right there with you wanting to heal you deliver you and set you free there's no time to feel sorry for nobody it's time to receive our healing jesus says rise Take up your bed and walk. Today, the Lord is saying, rise, get away from those drugs. Rise, get away from that alcohol. Rise, get away from that sexual immorality. The list goes on. Today, he's saying, rise. Today, he's saying, take action. Rise is an action word. Knock is an action word. Seek is an action word. Ask is an action word. Confess is an action word. And today, he's saying, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well. See, Jesus showed him because of his mercy, because of his grace, that it's him that heals and not the pool. Today, the Lord wants to show you his healing power, how much he loves you, how much he cares about you and what it is he can do for you. We go down a little bit into the chapter as we're running out of time here. They asked him, who is the man said to you, take up your bed and walk. But the one who was healed did not know who it was for Jesus had withdrawn. See, Jesus doesn't heal us for attention. Jesus heals you because he loves you. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you have been made well. Sin no more. When Jesus heals you, where are you going after your healing? Are you going back into the world? Or are you going into the temple like this man did to praise and worship the Lord? The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. And for this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him. See, the rest of the world doesn't want to see your healing. And the rest of the world doesn't want the best for you. And the rest of the world doesn't want to hear about the goodness of God because they are blinded and they are either knowingly or unknowingly serving the wrong God. We can't serve two masters for we're going to love one and despise the other. Jesus said, sin no more unless something worse might happen to you. Jesus is going to touch you, heal you, anoint you, set you free and deliver you. He said, sin no more unless something worse might come upon you. It may not be in this life, but it may be in the life to come because unrepented sin will keep us out of the gates of heaven. If you are not born again, you go to hell. You need to be born again to spend eternity in heaven. How do I get to heaven, you might ask? You call upon the name of the Lord and you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead. You call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved, born again and given the Holy Spirit. If you reject Jesus, you go to hell. And so I want you to know that you do deserve salvation. All you got to do is ask the Lord into your heart to be born again and any of you who have backslid, ask the Lord to forgive you because this is your day to be forgiven. We want to thank all of you so much for taking the time to tune in today. We hope that people came to salvation and repentance today. Please continue to partner with us for we build God's kingdom together and put the enemy on his back. 
Always remember that we are already victorious, just needing to persevere and finish the race. Don't fear anything, for God is on the throne and his plan will prevail. Please book us today to come fellowship, worship, and bring the word to you. All we need is an invite. Please visit our website at www.timothygrecoministries.org and prayerfully consider contributing to the ministry as we are so very thankful for the contributions as they are being used to lead others to Jesus, bring others back to Jesus, and give people a hope in Jesus that will not fail them. God always seems to make a way when there doesn't seem to be one. Feel free to contact me by email at any time, timothygrecoministries at gmail.com. And if nobody told you they love you today, we love you, God loves you, and we pray you have a blessed rest of the day. In Jesus' name, let's go.